Here we have qualitative data in column A representing the political party of each subject polled. Um, by clicking on column A and highlighting the whole column, I can see the count in the bottom right, 78, with one header makes 77 data points. For a frequency distribution, I can start by just copying the header and pasting over. Now, I typically leave one column blank so that way any sorting that happens in column A will not affect C. If those are right next to each other, um, it will typically, it will give you an option, but the default is going to mix everything up. Um, now, we need to list each party once. So we can skim through the list and see what we've got, or we can sort. Um, and I've got the header in bold, which should keep it in place. Now, if that wasn't in bold, it might um, just mix the whole thing up, including party. That would be down, you know, down at, um, lower in the alphabet. So next thing we'll do is take each party. Um, the best thing to do is copy and paste so you don't have any spelling errors or extra spaces or anything like that. So just copying and pasting each of those. And some of these only have one, which is fine. Uh, we still list it. Right now, they're going to be in alphabetical order. It is not going to stay that way. When we're all done, we will sort it by frequency, highest to lowest. So there I've got each of my parties represented. And you can resize just double clicking in between C and D there to auto auto size that. All right, in column D we're going to type frequency, um, making that bold is probably a good idea just to show that's a header. Now here's the part where we don't really need Excel, especially since there's 77. We could count these, um, we could highlight the Democrats only. Um, and then see the count 32 down there. There's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it that will work best for large data sets where you don't want to have to count them on your own or highlight them. So we'll use the count if function. You always start with an equals when you're going to do a, a formula or a function. Count if, and you'll see the options come up. Ifs is more for quantitative when you want, uh, when you have two criteria like you want to be above a certain number and a below a certain number. Um, or maybe you want to look in two columns and you want to find Democrats who are men or something like that. But here we just have one qualifier or one condition and I just double clicked, made it all caps, but it really didn't, didn't need to do that. Um, first we have a range input, that will be column A, comma, second input is criteria, here we're looking for Democrats. So this is the part where it was important I had exactly the same um, spelling with no space at the end or the beginning. We close the parentheses, enter, and we get 32, which was what I got when I highlighted. Now here's the beauty. Um, if I fill this down, A colon A will stay the same, because moving down a row, this, is, this didn't specify rows, so A colon A will stay the same. But C2, when I fill down, that red box is going to fill down with it, and I'm going to get C3, and it's going to count Green Party. So to fill down, you, you want to click once on that. Just to select the cell, go over the bottom right corner, you'll see the plus sign, and either double click or drag. If you double click, it just goes off right with the column to the left. Now, right here I've got a total of 77. That's what I should have. If you don't get that, so I'm just comparing. Over here, 78 total. One of them is going to be the header, so 77 data points. Over here, 77 counts or frequencies. So you can put total at the bottom. Um, let's go ahead and sort this first. I've got it highlighted already. I'm going to sort largest to smallest. 
this is the option I was talking about where we do not want to sort column D by itself. We want to keep these rows together, so we do want to expand. We usually keep that default. The only time we wouldn't would be if we left out a buffer, but then we'd have some issues because we wouldn't be able to keep these rows together. We would also be scrambling over here. So we go Republicans, Democrats, Independents. After that, it's going to default to whatever the previous sorting was, which was alphabetical. So all the one frequencies are going in alphabetical order. That's fine at this point. We, you know, it's either that or random or reverse alphabetical order. Um, the only other thing we're going to do is um, we can put a total down at the bottom. Um, I'm going to put that in bold just to show, you know, that's not really a data point. That's just one of our things we've added. Um, it automatically filled to zero because it kept going with that function and there's no total in column A. Um, so we can delete that. Uh, I'm just going to escape out of the cell and then hit delete to clear that out. Um, just a tip, if you, I'm going to undo there, if, if you're in a cell and you do backspace, you're just editing what you have there. If you hit escape, you exit out. If I hit backspace now with it selected, I go back to editing the cell. So that's why the delete key will help you. If you just have something selected, deleting clears it out. Um, now here we can do an auto sum by highlighting all of the frequencies and going up to auto sum. I'm in the home tab and just clicking on sum. And we, we will see there's 77 there. We could have just typed in this function as well. That's a sum from D2, starting cell, to D8 deleting that out. If I was doing this manually, I would be highlighting to get that box there. Enter to finish that. And now we'll add our relative frequency column. Automatic bold there. Resize. Now this will be dividing each frequency. So I'll start with D2 by the total. But thinking ahead to the fill down, when I fill this down, D2 is going to go D3, D4, D5, and D9 is going to go D9, D10, D11. So I do want the numerator to move with the fill, but I do not want the denominator. So right after you click on that D9 or type that in, if you hit F4, it'll put dollar signs in. The dollar sign locks either the column, so the dollar sign D means if I fill right and left, this will stay fixed. And dollar sign nine means if I fill up and down, the row number will stay fixed. I could have left off the first dollar sign since I'm not doing a left-right fill. And if you actually keep hitting F4, you'll cycle through the options. As long as we lock the row, we're good. So typically, in this class, we're filling up and down. You're going to see more often where you have a letter, dollar sign, number. It didn't. It shouldn't change anything with or without. So we still get the 0.493, but this is ultimately how I want it. So I'll fill that down. Uh, it shouldn't apply to the total, but we can do it. Relative frequency of the total would be 1. Now I'm just going to leave that blank. Um, now with these, you can format those by highlighting them. Um, up here in this number section, left and right will move decimal points so you can fix those all to three decimal points is what we commonly do you could make them percentages um, now once I go percentage to go back to number I have to use the pull down menu and go to number there so I'm gonna leave it with three per three decimal points um, just a quick check those should add up to one um, now I may uh, Oh yeah, 1.000, so it is adding it with only three decimal points. That's good, just to make sure the rounding didn't um, make it off from the total of one there.